So what I'm wondering is where did we transition in time in the last couple of decades where seed oils were, were forward leading from the front and we've kind of eliminated a lot of, of beef fat or it's been considered unhealthy. And uh, where do you think that that transition happened in the last couple of years? Oh, it's pretty clear. The, the history of this is fascinating. There was no such thing as a seed oil before 1870. And then it was first used as a machine lubricant. So they would, they would grind up seeds and use the oil as a machine lubricant. It wasn't really popularized for human consumption until 1910, 1911 with Crisco. Mm -hmm. We have a story about Crisco we could tell later, but you know, there, this is, and this was, I believe, um, they were, they were using, they had this excess machine lubricant and they were thinking like, oh, let's, let's use this for human consumption. This will be great. It, it doesn't spoil as well. It's cheaper. It's lighter. And it didn't really catch on until I think the 1950s. And I'll tell that part of the story in a moment. But if you look at human health, then of course, 1910, 1900, 1870, 1890, not quite the same as we have now with medicine, but we had records, right? We, we, we pretty much knew what a heart attack was and heart attacks were very rare. Diabetes, very rare. Obesity, very rare. There's photos from even 60 years ago and we look at humans and they were much less fat than we are today. People post these photos on Instagram all the time. 1950s at the beach, 1960s at the beach. It's all skinny people. But even if you, I'm sure if you wind back even further to the 1900s, early 1900s, we had a lot of skinny people. We didn't have a lot of massive obese, overweight humans like we do today. And we can get into those numbers. They're staggering. What the com the, like the combination of obesity and overweight today is, is enormous. So there's a clear transition in the last 100 to 110 years. Pseudo oils really didn't exist before, let's just say late 1800s and then introduced into the human supply chain, early 1900s. Now, along with that, again, this is all correlation. So we have to be careful. We can only draw a hypothesis from this, which we must test. And we can go into all of the lines of evidence that make me very concerned about seed oils. But these are all just observational correlations. But with the introduction of seed oils from 1910, we see a steady rise in chronic illness. All of it tracks together, gradually increasing rates of obesity, gradually increasing rates of cancer, gradually increasing rates of heart disease, gradually increasing rates of diabetes. And the, the most significant data we have is probably in the last 50 years, and the trend has continued. But that trend goes all the way back to the early 1900s. Again, just correlation, but we can talk about why I think there's a really compelling hypothesis to be drawn from that. And then I think it was in the mid to early 1950s that I think it was President Lyndon Johnson had a heart attack. And at that point, people were asking what, that it just captured the American, um, the American imagination. And we thought, why did this, this hero, you know, this, this, uh, this paragon of our culture have a heart attack? And it, I think it almost took him out of office. My history is a little fuzzy there, but that was the beginning of the medical system and the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association beginning to vilify cholesterol and then in connection with that, animal fats. That's the beginning of the problem. Then we have the stories of Ansel Keys and the seven country study, which we can go into. But if we back up again for a moment and we look at the health of the population in early 1900s, describe that a little earlier, pretty darn good. I mean, I don't think everybody had amazing diets, but for the most part, there wasn't any seed oil in 1900 in the American diet. People were eating exclusively tallow, which is rendered beef fat or lard. And the majority of pigs in 1900 were probably fed way better diets than they're fed today. The majority of pigs today get corn and soy. So we had animal fats, which were much probably better for humans. And they were essentially a hundred percent of the human diet of fats was animal fat, maybe a little bit of olive oil, but not even a whole lot in 1900. And so you're looking at butter, tallow, and lard as the main fats in the human diet. And the rates of chronic illness were very low. Diabetes, very low. Heart attacks, very low. Cancer, much lower. So you're thinking, wait, wait, how come nobody talks about that, right? Like, so we, again, it's a correlation. We see the introduction of seed oils in the last 100 years, especially in the last 50 years, we know things have gone down the toilet. So it's a very interesting history and it's been marketed to us as originally a cheaper, better alternative. It doesn't spoil. It looks clean. It's white. Um, Crisco's, you know, is, is pure white. Uh, margarine is pure white. They have to put like uh, pills in it to make it look uh, the same color as butter, which has flavonoids in it from the the grass that the cows are eating. And it's, the darker the butter is, the more grass the cow's eating. So it began with that. Again, it's a machine lubricant that got sold to humans as a food. And then in the 1950s, it became around cholesterol. And that was when the cholesterol hypothesis began. And the idea that LDL cholesterol, right? Low density lipoprotein. At that time, mostly we measured total cholesterol, but low density lipoprotein cholesterol 
was the blame, was to blame for heart attacks and that cholesterol was to blame for heart attacks. And what do we know? And this is probably the beginning of all of this, this piece of information. We know that saturated fat from animals raises LDL in a lot of people, not in everyone, but in a lot of people. So that was the beginning of the end for this and, and why seed oils have subsequently been elevated to a place of uh, near sacredness because, and we'll, we'll clarify these statements because they're, they're very misleading as I say them. If you eat canola oil, right? If you eat seed oils, which are high in polyunsaturated fatty acids, we can talk about what makes this fat saturated versus polyunsaturated. Your LDL generally goes down. And LDL is this thing we think of as colloquially, quote unquote, bad cholesterol. I'm sort of couching all of this with a lot of air quotes because I don't believe that these paradigms hold true. This is the mainstream perspective over the last six years, and I think it's totally wrong, and we've been wildly misled. But it is true that generally, if you consume canola oil, your LDL levels will go down. We can talk about why I think that's a bad thing, why it's misleading. But if you peg LDL as a pure cause of heart disease, of a pure, as a pure cause of atherosclerosis, this formation of plaque within the arterial wall of the body, and then you can say, look, this saturated fat from animals, this tallow, this lard, which is higher in saturated fat, tallow is about 50% saturated, that will raise LDL in many individuals. Then you can make this connection and people start to fear animal fat. So that is why you were told in nutrition school, these vegetable oils are good, presumably, because they lower LDL. And wouldn't you know it? Everyone knows that LDL is the cause of heart disease. Now, within that story, there are so many points that I would contend are incorrect and so many wrong turns that we made that we got way, way, way off track. And we can start with any of them, but that's the way I see the history of it. And it continues to this day that people, lipidologists, preeminent people in the medical community continue to hold steadfast to the notion that low density lipoprotein or more, more specifically, now people are calling it ApoB containing lipoproteins, which are ApoB 100 containing lipoproteins, which includes low density lipoprotein, but also includes things like chylomicrons, VLDL, et cetera, that that is a particle that is causative of atherosclerosis. It's hard to separate the discussion of the two. I don't want to get too technical, but I think that there is a ton of evidence to suggest, and we probably talked about this on the last podcast, that LDL, this LDL particle and these ApoB containing lipoproteins are not causative of atherosclerosis. They may get involved in the process, but I do not believe that a particle that have humans have evolved with that has an essential role in human physiology is literally circulating in my, I can only see the veins in my arm now, but there are arteries deeper, right? It's circulating in my arteries. And right now that LDL particle is crashing into the arteries and causing atherosclerosis in my body. That doesn't make any sense to me. There's more to that equation. And I think that that is where the, the whole, this whole fabric starts to unravel. And the story that we've been told just starts to really look like um, a collection of, of misleading statements that, like I said, lead us way, way, way off path.